Good afternoon. We're thanking you for being here to support the family as we commend Martha to the Lord. And I, I want you to know that we're not throwing you any curves today, but we are having uh, hymns from two different hymnals. In the bulletin, it shows the colors green and brown. Celebration hymnal and our Lutheran book of worship. So uh, we encourage you to join with the family as we sing the hymns today in praise of God and in memory of Martha. And so we give thanks for your presence today as you support Martha's family. Let us begin with our opening. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. You may be seated. As we gather today to hear the lessons and the music, sing the music and, and hear the lessons read, 
I remember one of the last visits that I had with Martha. When we got ready for the prayer, she said, Lord Jesus, be present. And, and that was a touching witness to me to know that she called for Christ to be present with her, not only during prayers, but throughout her life. And, and that, uh, that says abundant, gives us a, an abundant message about her life and her faith. That first lesson from Lamentations, the third chapter, that's printed in your bulletin, it says, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. At this time, we'll have special music. This song um, is a very special song in our church and a very old song in our church. When this song, when this music was purchased, it was a quarter. If that tells you how long this piece of music has been around in our church, it was 25 cent when we bought it. And this song is probably a staple in our church for a couple reasons, because the message is very true. But this song has been handed from person to person. There's a solo in this song. Mr. Baker used to sing this solo when he was in our choir. Then Miss Baker sang this solo. And I was supposed to sing this solo today, but if you listen to my voice, <laughs> Miss Pat says, Eddie, I'll, I'll play it. I said, Miss Pat, I don't think my voice will do that today. <laughs> But I want you to hear these words. In my last visit with Miss Baker, I walked in the room, and you guys were, y'all were beside her on the bed. And she looked over your shoulder and said, Eddie, I prayed that they would tell you to come. And she just looked. And it felt like we stood in that spot for 30 minutes with that sweet look on her face. And Charlotte, as we talked and as we talked about music, you, you all had stepped out of the room and gave us some time. That was so sweet. And we were talking about Scripture and being in the presence of the Lord. And I said, Miss Baker, what song is on your mind? And she said, Unto Thee, O Lord. Unto thee, O Lord, I lift up my soul. And that's as far as she got. The rest of that is, I lift up my soul, O Lord, unto thee. O my God, in thee have I trusted. Let not thine enemies triumph over me. Unto thee, O Lord. Unto thee, O Lord. Show me thy ways. Teach me thy paths. Thou art the God of my salvation. Show me thy ways. Teach me thy paths. Thou art the God of my salvation. O my God. In thee have I trusted. Let not thine enemies triumph over me. Unto thee, O Lord. Unto thee, O Lord. I lift up my soul. O Lord. Unto thee. And she did just that. And he said, come on.
The second lesson is from the 10th chapter of Romans. Dear brothers and sisters, the longing of my heart and my prayer to God is for the people of Israel to be saved. I know what enthusiasm they have for God, but it is misdirected zeal, for they don't understand God's way of making people right with himself. Refusing to accept God's way, they cling to their own way of getting right with God by trying to keep the law. For Christ has already accomplished the purpose for which the law was given. As a result, all who believe in him are made right with God. For Moses writes that the law's way of making a person's right, a person right with God, requires the obedience of all his commands. But faith's way of getting right with God says, don't say in your heart, who will go up to heaven to bring Christ down to earth? And don't say, who will go down to the place of the dead to bring Christ back to life again. In fact, it says, the message is very close at hand, and it is on your lips and in your heart. And that message is the very message about faith that we preach. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. As the, as the scriptures tell us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Jew and Gentile are the same in this respect. They have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? This is why the scriptures say, How beautiful are the feet of messengers, of messengers who bring good news. But not everyone welcomes the good news. For Isaiah the prophet said, Lord, who has believed our message? So faith comes from hearing. This is hearing the good news about Christ. Here ends the reading.
day have been scriptures that, the, that Ms. Baker had written down. It's what she wanted. What was important to her was, do you know Jesus? You can sum it up right there. Your relationship with the Lord was important to her. And when I started thinking about, well, what gospel do I use? Then it turned into what gospels do I use? So I said, you know what? Here's how I'm going to do this. She was our, how many of you, did she ever teach Bible to you? Raise your hand. If she ever taught you Bible at any point in time in your life, some of y'all know. Now, I can't do this because I'm not even close to as pretty as she was. But she would sit there with her, with her, she would sit in her chair, she would cross her legs, and she would have her Bible right there. And we would start talking. And she would take us to church through Scripture. So I sat down the other night and started thinking, what in the world do I say? How do I encapsulate this awesome woman of God, this mother, this grandmother, this husband, this friend, this just spiritual giant in my life? How do I put her into words? She decided to call us right there <laughs> to make sure. Hen Henry, good night. I told you she's going to make you behave today. She would always tell Mr. Henry, Henry, you behave. And he and I were standing around here talking a little while ago. I said, Henry, in some unique way, she will let you know today. <laughs> but the first scripture I want to think about for a few moments is Matthew chapter 5. And I see Miss Baker in this. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored. It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. <clears throat> you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Did we see Miss Baker in that scripture? Sure did. How many times does she sit and teach us how to be that light? This little light of mine, I'm gonna let shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it, let it shine. Let it, let it shine. Let it, let it Hide it under a bushel. Now that's not the way that goes. Hide it under a bushel. No. Hide it under a bushel. No. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. shine. Now, now for some of you this will not be as applicable as some of us home folk here. Let it shine around. That's right. She would always say you got to let it shine around this place as well. Let it shine. Let your light shine. She would teach us that. The importance of letting our light shine. Not just here, but in our life as a whole. Let our light shine. Then, a few chapters later in Matthew. Matthew chapter 12. Either make the tree good and its fruit good or make the tree bad and its fruit bad. The tree is known by its fruit. I wonder what kind of fruit she produced in her life. Bounteous fruit. What kind of fruit did she produce? Let's see. After graduating from high school, she attended Charlotte Memorial School of Nursing. She graduated as a registered nurse, later earned a bachelor's degree in science during her professional nursing career. While nursing, worked at the VA as the director of nurses, at the Lutheran home, as an assistant director of nurses at Huntersville Oats, as a parish nurse. During her career, she continued to learn. 
and to serve. And earning certificates and degrees. In her retirement, she continued to serve. She continued to give. Small groups, Bible studies, while at the Pines, she led more Bible studies. She was on the welcoming committee, and she started, helped start the chaplaincy program. Tree is known by its pretty good fruit there. Matthew chapter 16. Peter, one of my favorite people in Scripture. Now, when Jesus came into the, the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They said, some say that you're John the Baptist. Others say Elijah. So others say Jer Jeremiah. Who are the prophets? Who do you say I am? You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed that to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter. This rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Who do you say he is? Who is, who is he to you? She taught us who Christ is in our life. It was important to her that we knew that. From a young age until, for, for me, my last visit with her, I tried to quote a scripture to her, and I tried to make it fit all of us. She and I both there at the bed. She corrected me. <laughs> How many have ever been corrected by Miss Baker? I said, Miss Baker, the Lord is our shepherd. She went. And I thought, it does say that. She said, my shepherd. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> but look how she made that so personal. He was her shepherd. Who do you say I am? You are my shepherd. I don't want because you are my shepherd. Yes, ma'am. Then, Matthew chapter 25. And here's where I want to get to. And I will do my best to get through this. For it will be like a man going on a journey. Called his servants, he entrusted to them his property. One he gave five talents, to another he gave one, to another according to their ability. Then he went away. He had received five talents, went at once and traded them, made five talents more. Two talents, he made two talents more. But the one who received one talent, when he went and dug, he dug it in the ground and he hid the master's money. Now, after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more. Saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here, I've made five more. The master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. In Miss Baker's life, think of all of the talents that God gave her. The ways that she could use not just her, her personality, her education, her music, her knowledge of scripture. How did she use that talent that was given to her? 
when she was one, and there's more than one of us in here today, so she has totally multiplied that talent because she's touched the life of every one of us in here today in some way. I dare say that she has heard those words, well done. Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over that. Look what I've got. Enter in to what I've got for you. I think it's interesting that tomorrow in the life of the church is All Saints Sunday. When we think about the loved ones of us that have gone on before us, that have entered into the church triumphant, And I light this candle in her honor and in her remembrance for the joy and the honor and the privilege of knowing her and the gift that she's brought to us. And on this candle, it says, let your light so shine. And her light shines just as bright today as it ever has. You know, I think the Lord allows us to have very special moments and times with people. He does. And I know each one of you have had that in your own special way. Whether it was when she would come over and had her own special room at the house. The, she called it her vacation room that was just loaded and doted with pictures and what made her feel special. That will be different, but that will forever be a place that you will treasure. Those will be memories you will hold on to forever. We were talking as a family up here earlier about, and I'm sure some of you at different churches never have this opportunity. None of this ever happens at your church, but it does happen here at Concordia once in a while where different people will walk in, and if you are sitting in their seat, <laughs> they will ever so sweetly let you know you're sitting in their seat. Not because they just want you to know that you're sitting in their seat, they fully expect you to get up out of their seat, because that's their seat. But she would sit, one of the last times she was here, she sat right in this area. And I remember listening to, to Pastor, I was sitting right here and I listened to Pastor Ken talk, but I found myself just turning and looking at her as she gazed right there. And she just focused on that stained glass in that altar. And I said to her afterwards, I said, Miss Baker, what did you get out of sermon today? She said, I just prayed. She said, the pastor said one line to me and I prayed the rest of the time. Watch and pray. And when I went to, to visit her the other Friday, I walked in and she greeted me and then you all stepped out of the room and we sat there and talked. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, there's no one that knew some of the things that she said to me except the Holy Spirit. Because she says some very specific things that I promise you no one knows except what the Holy Spirit shared with her. And she said this to me. She said, young man, I love you. Rise up and never forsake the call on your life. That will forever be special to me. Let your light so shine. Don't hide it. Know who Christ is to you. Who does everybody else say he is? Doesn't matter. 
Who do you say he is? Who is he to you? Look at those scriptures, the first lesson, the second lesson that we read. It was important. If you will look at them and hear what that word says, what was important is that you know the Lord. Not how you know him. Do you know him? It's not about our denominational thoughts. It's about do you have a relationship with him? That's what was important to her. And that's what she would want us to walk out of here thinking today. We sang it when we all get to heaven. It is well with her soul. It will be well with our soul. And I love that third and fourth verse of that song. My sin, oh, the bliss of that glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole is nailed to the cross. I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. And the fourth verse starts with Miss Williamson back there would be wonderful. Excited that I use this. That fourth verse is a conjunction word. The word and and Lord haste the day. When everything that we believe in is sight. Miss Baker's day has been haste. Ours hadn't, but hers has. Everything she believed in, there it is. He loves us. Oh, how he loves us. He loves you. He loves her, and he loves me. She sang this sweet little song not long before she passed away. Miss Lisa, if you'll make sure you get in a key that's low enough for me today. But I want you to sing, you'll, you will know this song, and I just want you to sing it with me. Oh, how he loves you and me. how he loves you and me
Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your graciousness. We thank you for the way that you, that you love us. Jeremiah tells us you love us with an everlasting love. And underneath us, you hold us with your everlasting arms. It's a great place for us to rest today. In your everlasting arms. God, we thank you for Miss, Miss Baker's life. We thank you for the, the gift of her life, not to just to the people in this room today, but we thank you for the gift of her life and the ripple effect of how her life is continuing to touch and will continue to touch people long after today. God, we thank you that you have allowed us to have her in our lives. We are very thankful and appreciative for that, Father. You received her back unto yourself, Lord. Where you are, she is also. We rejoice in that. Holy Spirit, comfort this family, not just today, but in days and weeks ahead. It's only you can do that. We can hug them today. We can laugh with them. We can share stories with them today. But Holy Spirit, I ask that you comfort them in those moments when we, when we are not there, when we're not present, but you are present. God, because of what Jesus done for us, we can say it's well with her. She's heard the words. Because of the great good news of that gospel, death, <laughs> you've lost. Life has won. And for Miss Baker, Miss Martha, morning has come. We lift up our eyes today, just as she would sit in that pew and gaze ahead and look ahead. We lift our eyes today. From where does our help come? Our help comes from the Lord. We're thankful for that. We are thankful for that, Lord. We give you praise for everything that you have allowed us to share today. In your son's precious and holy name, we pray. Amen. Now, for this closing hymn, we were giving specific instructions. Go figure. <laughs> specific instructions on how we are to do this. And we're going to do it, yes ma'am, as she asked us to do. And the family is going to lead us in this. She said, I want you to circle up and sing Amazing Grace. So if you're on the outside of the pew, and I know this is going to stretch some of you, but please do this for her. Stretch your way out. I want to circle the outside of the wall. If you're in the, in the inside, circle the light, cross the pews, and we're going to sing this song together. Give us a good intro, Miss Pat.
of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thank we you. will. So the family, we will take the family right out this side and down. We will gather in the Family Life Center. Please come and fellowship with them. You want to take them on?